Welcome back, everyone. If you missed the morning session, we had a great time with Michael, who talked about registration tips and tricks. And a reminder that all of our sessions are being recorded for, from the week, and they'll be posted on the conference site. And you can see on this screen where you can find that. Just click on the session, and, and that'll drop down, and you'll have access to those recordings as we get those posted. Kelly from Auburn University at Montgomery won a sampler packet of cookies from Savannah's Famous Birds Cookies. And speaking of Savannah, someone in the audience today at this session will win a gift from the Savannah Bee Company. They have a, a nice little shop along the riverfront with all sorts of good things. So if you can ever get back there, stop in and give them a visit. And speaking of Auburn University at Montgomery, we want to welcome Brittany. Brittany, I'm going to bring you up on webcam. If you can bring that up, I'm not seeing it. Mm -hmm. like you'll have to bring yourself up. There you are. Thanks for Hello. joining us today. Hello. Brittany's worked with Auburn University at Montgomery. I'm going to refer to them as AUM from now on for nearly 10 years now, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she serves as Senior Program Associate for Continuing Education, where she manages customer registrations, payments and correspondence. She is an ACEWARE champion educator, an ACE, and that's an award we give to individual software users for their innovation and their extensive use of student manager and ACEWEB and provide outstanding leadership for their team. Brittany's brought us many great ideas for development. As Mike mentioned this morning, most of our development ideas are from you, our customers. And we appreciate those ideas that she's brought. ACEWARE has been in partnership with AUM for over 30 years, and you're in for a real treat this afternoon. As I turn controls over to Brittany, I want to remind you that you can ask questions from her as she talks. Just give a shout out in the chat box, and we'll be monitoring those questions or comments, and we can get those to Brittany as needed. So, Brittany, I'm going to turn things over to you, and we look forward to what you have to share with us. All right. Very good. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. Um, of course, my name is Brittany Thomason, and I have been with Auburn Montgomery uh, for pretty much almost 10 years now, and um, I've enjoyed it so much, and I've, I've worked in student manager uh, for uh, quite a long time. And um, I just am so excited to have this opportunity to speak to you all today. And I'm going to talk about Pocket Ledger. And this is such a, a really great tool uh, in Student Manager that allows you to track expenses and income for courses. And allow, it allows users to generate profit loss reports and assist with tracking and planning finances for your courses. You can specify and categorize expenses and more. And we will see how this works. And I'm going to do plenty of examples for you during this session. So before I get started, I would like to see how many attendees today are currently using Pocket Ledger. OK, so raise your hand, folks, if you are a user of Pocket Ledger. Pop those hands up, and we'll wait a little bit to see see. Gosh, Brittany, you have about 50 people, and I would say just about 25%, so not a lot of users. This will be great for them. Okay. okay. Fantastic. All right. Let's see here. So uh, today I'm going to be showing you the Pocket Ledger screen in Student Manager and how it is used uh, to help you have a better understanding of it. You'll be able to learn how to add and edit records in the system. Um, basically, records for these are called, quote, cost centers uh, for programs. Um, and what's great about this module is that you can make corrections to expenses if needed right from the course screen. Uh, I'm going to show you about what all the fields mean. I'm going to show you how to uh, mass distribute expenses across multiple programs. This is extremely helpful if you have little time, but a lot of courses to enter data to. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take the data from the instructor screen 
inside the course record and add instructor pay to your course and include it with your other expenses for that course. Pocket Ledger is so helpful in um, helping program managers have a true picture of how your program is running by viewing the income from the class minus the instructor pay and any other expenses that may have happened with the course. And we're gonna do some examples for these. So um, this here is a, a screen of the Pocket Ledger that you'll see in Student Manager. Um, you can start with projected expenses that you think are uh, you're going to spend on a course and then later make the change for it to be an actual expense after the program has ended. There are reports in the system that will let you see your projected and actual expenses for a course like to compare. Um, this is also where you're going to, so here up at the top, um, is where you see the actual actual and projected and expense and income. Let's see if I can find the little uh, highlighter. Here we go. Up here is where you can mark whether it is an expense or income. Um, most of the time you will have this setting as an expense, but there may be instances of grants or gifts that you will want to record income on in a course in the listing for your profit loss reports. You'll definitely want to classify the expense. It's very important to do this um, in the type of expense um, for your records. You'll see major expense categories and then expense classifications. Major expenses, for example, could be like food or instructor costs, marketing, overhead, supplies. Expense classifications are technically nestled up under the major categories. And so you may have three different expense classifications that go up under marketing, for example, like advertising printing, advertising media, advertising catalogs. But I'll show you what those look like. Um, the account code here, if you have accounts in Student Manager, you can have this tied to your course. It, you know, the, if the account number is tied to your course in Student Manager, it will automatically be posted in this window if you're creating the record directly from the course screen, but you may have instances where another account is used to pay for the particular expense. You're definitely gonna wanna note a description for your expense. Later down the road, when you're running financial reports and are planning for the next year, you will be able to see specifics on what you purchased and how much it cost at the time. Let's see. For vendors, you may have a, a specific vendor for the cost for the expense. Like if you have supplies costs, um, you may have like staples. You may have staple, uh, staples or Costco for food or uh, this, this is where you can put that information. Over here, you'll, of course, you'll have the date that it was posted, the date of the expense. You can put the amount and your over here is where you're going to be able to see the entries you have done. Um, all the, and you can see the expenses with the list. I will show you in a little bit of how, um, if you have income already in a course, on this screen, you'll be able to see the expenses subtracted from the income to see a net. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so cost centers are the same as course numbers. Basically, when you create a course in Student Manager, the system will create a pocket ledger cost center with that same code. Before you start adding expenses to your courses, you will want to make sure your expense classifications and major categories are set. These are connected and on the next slide, you will see how these work together. Um, I'm going to show um, you adding and editing records from the course screen. Basically, there's two ways to add pocket ledger records to your courses in Student Manager. You can add them directly from the course screen or from module. And so for expense classifications and categories, um, let's see. 
Here is a sample of what you'll see as options in the system. So at the top is the major expenses. So all your food types of expenses would go up under this category. And of course, instructor costs, you've got your marketing and overhead or supplies and so forth. And this, these are codes that you can create in the code editor. And of course, how these are connected, you can have your expense classifications connected to those. So let's see here. Okay, uh, for the listing, this is a sample of what it looks like. As you can see here, the income from the class is up here at the top. And in the middle, you see a listing of expenses that have occurred for the course. They are subtracted from the income, so you have a balance. So this is really nice. And you can print this data. There's so much you can do with it. So it's really cool. Oh, let me jump over to Student Manager and we will do a couple of samples. Let's see here. I've got a couple of summer camps in here I'm going to show you. So we're going to go here to Alphabet Soup. And the pocket ledger button is over on the right column of the course screen. So we have 15 students in here. We've got our income. So this course is doing pretty good. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take a look at the expenses and maybe add a couple of more if needed. So here is the pocket ledger screen. For this first expense, it is an actual expense. And so I have it marked as actual up here. Let me get the little pointer. I've got it as actual. It is an expense. And we have we had created the classification of the expense as supplies under the major category. This account number is actually we have it tied to the youth programs. So that way you can choose the account. You've got the date and the amount of the expense. I've got a good description of it and a vendor. Um, I'd like to see all these other examples that I have in this class. So I'm gonna click here, list CC entry so we can see the other expenses. We have the income here at the top. And I went through and I've added a couple of expenses just so you could see. We've got um, supplies. I did a little bit of a marketing expense, food, faculty pay. And later I'm going to show you when I get into the mass dis distribution part, I will show you how I did this Facebook ad, which is divided up amongst all of the classes for this particular program and the youth coordinator too, because they weren't tied to one program, they were tied to multiple classes. So that's pretty cool. So let's say, oh, I would like to add another expense. So I'm going to go down here and I'm gonna hit add. So let's say I have, um, Let's see, what is this? This is alphabet soup. Let's say we needed to purchase more soup cans for this class. <laughs> so I'm going to choose the expense for food. And let's say, for example, this was $30. So we had to get lots of soup for all the kiddos. So we have soup cans. And let's say, oh, I went to Publix for these. And so I'm gonna put Publix. This vendor area should be tied to the faculty or the, the firm, I'm sorry, the firm field in student manager. So um, if it's already saved to your student manager, it, it would be listed here, but I don't have this, this particular vendor saved to this uh, demos of student manager yet. So that's okay, but I've got it here. I've got the expense and I'm just going to go ahead and do save. And now, as you noticed in the listing, it 
it did have five here and now it has six. So that way we see, oh, there's another one. Let me show you how um, to go about adding the codes. So, of course, here's your main home screen in Student Manager. We're going to go take a look at our mass, uh, our uh, major categories and the expense classification categories. So I'm going to go in here and scroll down to ledger. Okay, so here's your major expense categories and where you can add and edit. I want to see the list, so I'm going to do find. So we've got food, marketing, overhead, supplies, travel. Um, pretty happy with the choices we have here. So hit escape. If you want to add another one, you would simply just add it here. To look at the expense classification codes, you just go up one more. And as you'll see, these are tied to the major expenses here and you can specify which one it is. So you, you may have several nestled up under the um, supplies and materials. Right now, I think I have one. So let's say, oh, I wanna add another one. So I'm gonna do add and let's just do, let's have another type of supplies and materials. How about, um, let's see here, computers. <laughs> Save. And now, if you hit find, you'll see all the different uh, classifications that you have in your student manager. And you can add and edit these at any time. You can see which ones are active. Does anybody have any questions uh, before I get going further? I think we're doing good, Brittany. You're doing good. All right. Sounds good. Oh, actually, let me uh, clarify that. We did have a question from Omaha about when you're adding expenses to a course, it defaults to the course uh, account number, but you can change that account number in the expense record if you wish, right? Yes, right absolutely. Right. So how I did that, I went back to the course. You just mm -hmm. go over here to Pocket Ledger. And you can change the account number right inside the the uh, cost center. Very so good. All right. Um, Thank you much. That, that's the only one sure. so far. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's say community services paid for these alphabet letters. <laughs> so you can change it like that. And whenever you run your reports later, uh, there's reports showing account number um, for for the classes. So that's pretty cool. Let's see here um expense classifications and categories we covered that multiple expenses and uh, of course there's ways like like i showed y'all here um how you can see you can add as many as you need i i don't think there's a maximum <laughs> uh number or uh, of lists that you could put for the class so and you mean maximum, a, Brittany, maximum number of expenses to add to the class? Yeah, expenses. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, there is a limit. It's one trillion or a three billion character size database file. So. Wow, okay, so, <laughs> very so there good. You go. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So, previewing the expenses. Um, so that's how we, Took care of that. Um, and I'm going to go on to another class and you'll see. So I'm in a different class now and I'd like to see again the uh, expenses for that class. So I'm going to go over here to Pocket Ledger. And here's first four expenses. And you, have, you can have the different types. And you can see the list here. Okay, let's see, where were we? I think we were at uh, mass distributions. Okay, so um, one thing about 
mass distributing an expanse across multiple programs is you want to, before you do it, you want to write down the course code or any other data that you would need before dispersing the expanse. And one, a place to find this tool is under module, pocket ledger and mass entry. You can specify the type of the expanse and any other data, add a description to the expanse, and um, there's multiple options for distributing the expanse as well. Let's see here. All right. uh, one thing that this is great for is marketing costs, like if you have a catalog, anything um, that an amount that would apply to multiple programs as opposed to just one at a time. So let's do a sample. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look and the classes that I would like to add a mass expense to are these summer camps here. All these codes are similar, so 19UC, that'll be my, my prefix that I use. So I'm going to go to escape. We're going to go over here to module. Let's see, pocket ledger, mass entry. Okay, so here is the mass pocket ledger entry window. We want to, let's say we have a catalog that we used for these courses. So um, we'll just do advertising printing. We'll say the catalogs, we mailed a lot of catalogs. Um, let's do $500, how about that? And the youth program paid for these. Of course, you will see after I chose, well, yeah, uh, after I chose the, the classification, that one was tied to the marketing major expense category. So the description here, let's do catalog. And vendor, you can just type whichever vendor that you used here. You can state where if it was already paid. So that's a nice option. Let's, okay, now I'm going to distribute the expense. This is nice. Um, just in case, if you have any data that you may need to have for the classes, it will pop up this little window. Are you sure you want to continue? And I'm, I'm sure that I want to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. So uh, there's multiple options that it will give you for mass distributing an expense. You could do the course number, you could do the, a date range, a specific department name, and a specific account number, and so forth. Or you could have like um, all these options. There's additional conditions as well. So I'm just going to do because I know the course prefix. I'm going to do 19UC. And you can, one thing that's great about this is you can preview before you distribute, just in case. So I'm going to preview just to be sure that I'm doing this to the right classes and these are all the ones that I would like to do and see how quick this was instead of going into each individual class I went to one area and I'm able to distribute and let's say you may want to uncheck some classes that it may not apply to so you have that option I'm going to go ahead and use all of them and I'm going to hit done. And I think, okay, it took me back to this screen, but we did the preview. So now we're going to actually do it. So I'm going to hit okay. You're about to distribute a total of $500 of expenses between 13 courses. And it will show you what it would be divided. And I, I do want to continue. So I'm going to hit yes. Now, one thing that's great, if you made a mistake and you don't want to assign this yet, you can hit no. But I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. Expense was successful. So boom, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> I'm going to hit OK. And it will 
If you have any other mass entries you would like to do, it will ask you again. I'm going to go ahead and hit no, though. Um, I like to go into my class and just take a look because I'm a double checker. Let's go to Cupcakes and Sweets, see if it if the expense stamped in there. OK, so I'm going to go over here to Pocket Ledger. All right. And I'm going to see the list. You can see the list of the cost center entries here. You can list your new entries. That, and um, you can also find see the list from here. OK, and it went through. So here is the record that I just did, and it went to the class. So that was pretty cool. All right, before I move on, does anybody have any questions about mass distribution? Things are looking good, Brittany. Very thorough, thank you. Okay, great. Instructor pay. All right, so this one's actually pretty fun. So we are going to uh, see how to add instructor pay to Pocket Ledger from the course instructor tab. In that instructor tab, you uh, of course that's where you specify the um, the instructor you can have multiple instructors on that one course as well and i will show you that and um, we can see the entries so let's see here it's a lot easier if i just do a live demo so okay for this particular class I'm going to go to the instructor tab. So Arthur Alexander is the instructor. I have already added an uh, expense to Ledger to this course, but I'll show you how I did it. There's different options that it will give you for the pay Brittany, time. You could, you could just add a new instructor. OK, all right, let's do it. So I'm going to add another instructor. Let's, let's see, how about Princess Aurora? <laughs> so Princess Aurora, okay, she is an, a new instructor for this class. So we, it shows you the total amount due and actually everybody has paid in, for this class. So here's the total amount due for this course. And for Princess Aurora, we, we could say how, for the pay type, you've got all these options. You've got hourly, a percentage of gross or net per student, per class, a flat rate, other. Um, for this program, we'll, we'll do hourly. And the expense class code, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that that is connected to um, the hourly personnel. We're going to, okay, that's youth services that automatically populated. So let's say this instructor taught um, 15 hours and she is paid, let's say, $40 an hour. All right, it will automatically populate the total pay if she's paid hourly. If we wanted to change this to per student, we could change that. Let's see, per student. Um, I know I'm used to doing it the hourly way, but um, you can see the percentage of the class, but this is basically a sample. I'm gonna go back to hourly. And see how you have none entered right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit post to ledger, and then it will post and you will see so from the instructor screen, you can add instructor pay to Ledger. I'm going to go over to the Ledger to take a look. OK, so I had already added this instructor pay. So I'm going to click through. Got a couple of expenses in here. And there's Princess Aurora's instructor pay. So it was added to the ledger uh, successfully. So let's see here. 
All right. Reports. So uh, there are several types of reports in the system that you can use for viewing your expenses. Um, this one, let's see, the, you can uh, go in Student Manager Reports Pocket Ledger. You can view them this way or even directly from the ledger screen. Let's see here. There's with the different types of expense reports, they have them by cost center, uh, which will basically group all the costs for one course together. And then the courses will be sorted on your report. You can specify the expense class. So for example, you want your supplies um, together across the courses or all the food costs together, and it will total the costs of those major categories for your courses. You can um, have the reports by account number, and vendor too, and running your reports uh, for income and expense balances. So I think I've got a screenshot here. Uh, this one over here looks like it is by expense class. So we had all supplies and materials for the programs. And you can see all of the supplies here. And I'll do a, I'll do a sample in a second. Oh, I think over here shows, okay, all the food and beverage together, the travel, all the, these types of um, expenses and personnel. So uh, from Pocket Ledger, same area as we went to, it's actually, it's so easy, it's just right here. You have, of course, you can see your entries that way. When we want to look at a report, we can do print requisition and you have different options here. You can modify your report. You can see the preview, um, the additional reports. I'm, I have created some, so I'm gonna do additional. Okay, and we want to do detail. Okay, so for this particular class, it will show you the list and it and this is printable. So if your program manager wants to see all the expenses for a specific course, you could come in here, print it out real easy, and give it to the program manager, and they could take they can see the expenses and then the cost center balance. This cost center balance is um, the income minus the expenses, which is really great. I think we've got a couple of other ones in here in the additional reports. I'm going to go back one more time, take a look. Um, let's see here. Let's see the one that summary. Uh, this may be a specific type. Um, I don't see all of the expenses here, but I'll show the other ones the other way. So I'm going to close out of this. I would like to see the expenses for all of those programs. So I'm going to go to, let's close out of that, reports. Let me know if I'm moving too fast. <laughs> uh, reports, pocket ledger. So this area is where you can see the different types of reports that by a cost center, by expense classes, by the account number. And I want to see the uh, the classes sorted. So we're going to do cost center grouping. And um, I think I have additional. We'll just do that one. I went ahead and saved a query in here to make it faster and easier for me. So I Got it created and I'm going to hit select. No reports. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, not sure what's going on with the display here. Um, let's see. I wanted to show the full screen. I'm not sure, just let's see. Well, anyway, um, this um, basically, so you can see the courses are sorted. Everybody to see the whole page. It must be a, a resolution issue with your monitor there. So, uh, um, 
I may could fix it real quick. I just don't want to take up too much time. Display. Let's make it 100. There you go. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll help. Let me go may back and to, You may need to re render yeah. that. Yeah. Hopefully, the font won't be too small. I'm on a laptop. <laughs> Ports, pocket ledger, expense listings, cost center. All right. Additional. Okay. I've got my summer camps query ready to go. I'm going to hit select. Yay. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so now you can see the um, all of the expenses for my classes. And because we chose cost center, it's sorted by the classes. So we've got this first class up here and all the expenses associated with that one, the next class and so forth. And the totals are down below. And this report just shows the expenses, it's not showing the um, income, but you can, there's plenty of reports in the system where you can view both information. All right, so here's all the all of them listed by that way. I would like to look at my program by, uh, I would like to see the categories of supplies together and marketing together. So, okay, let's go back. Let's, let's try another way. So we're gonna go back here reports back to pocket ledger again and expense class so we can see the specifics together all right and we're just going to do okay because I've, I've got the report in there that i like to use same query select major Okay. All right. Um, up here, not sure how this one didn't get tied into the instructor pay, but I can go in and fix that easily. The food and beverage is listed all together, and it even can tell you the class. So that way you can know, oh, how much food did I spend on this program? How much marketing did I spend on the program in general instead of specific classes? So that's what's so great about these reports. So we had a catalog, we had a Facebook ad. Oh, here's all our supplies together. And let's see here. Of course, there is another way that's even better, which is favorites. If I didn't wanna to have to go through that, over again every single time and I had a specific one that I like to use. If you're not using favorite reports, I would highly recommend it. It's awesome. So I'm going to go in here and add it to my favorites. So the set report. I know it is pocket ledger. Let's see. Um, cost center grouping is where it showed the courses, expense class, account number, vendor. Let's say I just want the classes. So I'm gonna do that one, just the default. My summer camps, done, save. Now, instead of going through all the trail, I can quickly, okay, I want my report right now. So let's go to favorite reports. There it is, run report, okay. Voila. So much faster. <laughs> and there it is, uh, all the classes with the expenses. So that was pretty cool. There was another area I wanted to show y'all. Let me double check with my slide. I may be jumping ahead. Oh, I did jump ahead, but uh, adding it to your favorites is an awesome idea. There was one that showed the Income. So this one's great. Let's do income detail. So 
we can see the income and the expenses for a class on a nice printable uh, document. Let's see, I'm going to the default traditional. Let's try it. Summer camps. Select. Ledger. They have uh, reports that are already in here for you, ready to go, that you can use and modify. Okay, so there, this first page shows that first class. So has all the details. Got the supplies, printing, food, and all the students in the class and their payments, which is great. Let's see. Okay, there on the next page, you can see how it showed a lot of details and the net that you have for that program. So that's really awesome. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I may have moved pretty fast, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions or review anything that I covered. All right, we've got a couple questions for you, Brittany. Um, one of the questions is, are you able, and this is from Sarah, are you able to create a query for expenses that would search by coordinator so that you could run expenses uh, for just one coordinator? Yes. Uh, let's see here. We could go in here. Um, let me go into these classes and just double check. Okay, Jones. So Beth Jones. Okay, let's run a report for Beth Jones. Um, I think there should be. Uh, yeah, it, the coordinator is in the list. It, you may need to add it with the add item. So go ahead and pull up the balances, expense income balances, and create a query from there. Uh, oh, here. Okay. Let's do summary detail, either one. Summary. Okay. And of course, that'll be in the query area. So I'm going to do well, this default is fine. Let's do okay. Um, instead of the summer camps, let's choose the specific faculty person. No, it, uh, I'm sorry. Coordinator. Coordinator. So just <laughs> okay. go ahead and add a new one and then you can. Uh... And this is demonstrating how to create a uh, new query if you're new to the manager here. Okay. How uh, I went in through the report process in the query area, instead of selecting one of those that's already there, I hit add. We're adding a title first. So expenses by coordinator. And let's say maybe I don't want an entire year. Maybe I just want a, a range of dates. So I like to be specific in the query title. Okay. And You'll probably um, need to add missing item if you don't see it there. Okay. Where's my coordinator? Let's lower, see. lower. Bingo. Coordinator. Now, while uh, Brittany is doing this, this is illustrating that, again, in the query list when you're doing the selection, uh, not every field that's available for querying might be in the list. You'll have to hit your escape twice to back up now. Um, but you can use that add missing item to reference a new field or a field that just hasn't been tagged yet. And now she'll illustrate how uh, you can now go back and use that, so. Mm, Up at the top. There it is, right there at the top. And if you right click on the name of it, you will see what the field the code is for that field. So I'm going to double click. Um, instead of choosing a specific coordinator, later I may want to come back and run it for a different person. So I want to choose that per I'm going to do late uh, later and I'll show you that. Well it Let's begins see. with yeah yeah you need it to now you yeah, and yeah, ask later. Go. Yep. And then I'll add my range of dates. Let's see. Data expense, one one down. 
that one between dates later. Okay. All right, there we go. So the query that I just created has now appeared in the list. I'm going to click on it and select. I'm going to choose do this because maybe I don't remember all the details of the name of the coordinator. He said it was Jones. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this year because I added a lot. Of, well, hmm. And okay. Okay, so this is a summary, and it's Yay. a pretty report. You see all the classes, the expenses, income, if you have any outstanding balances, the current balance, and so you can do that. Awesome. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Any other demonstrations that I could do? Uh, there was a question from Lorelai wanting to know, can you export expense reports to Excel? Well, I'm sure you can. Let's yep. see here. <laughs> Let's do reports, pocket ledger. Um, wonder, it may have, to, so Excel. Just pick one, any one, and you'll have that. In All down, right, export down. to file. Yep. Now, now, just to note, uh, Brittany, uh, Brittany is using the ex export to file, which will actually export the raw data to an Excel file. Uh, you can also export um, kind of your formatted report to a different file. Although, when you do that formatting, um, I, I don't know. Brittany, my experience with that is that the, the report sometimes comes out a bit funky. So the really for one, Excel. Yeah, usually well, it is for Excel. That's why I usually well, like. To yeah. Do it and way. yeah, the raw data that uh, go ahead and carry on. Now, that'll give you a, a, a format the way you want it. So go for it. Okay. And let's say I'll just do my summer camps that I'm used to doing. I double clicked on it. So you can double click on a query title or you can hit select. And here is where you will see the fields for the expenses. And one thing that I love to do that I will show y'all is go to the help guide. It's excellent, excellent. Help. I like to do the share, see in the screen okay screen layout the help guide is awesome for this that way you can hover over a field and see what the code is let's do the pocket ledger screen okay let's say i would like to run i would like to extract data and i want to know and you may want to have like a pen and paper handy so let's see, L E A M T for the amount. We want the L E post date. Let's do not listed in major. L E Kent. And let's see the description. L E disk. Any other data we need? Account number, L E A C C T. Oh, A C C T N U M. Okay, that is so helpful. So I'm going to minimize that. Okay, and now I know what fields to look for in this list. I wanted the amount, the account number. The post date, the major category. I want the description. Where's the description? There it is. 
LD well oh. LD disk yeah now that's the cad that's the um, a ca that's the cost center description you're going to want to do LE disk I believe if you don't have it in oh you've got LD LE disk that's the ledger uh, that's a cost center description LE disk is the um, actual yeah there you go you got it that's the oh, so I need to remove that one oh yeah, okay you might need that one. And the course number, if you want the course or the the name of the course up there. Yeah, let, let's do that. Now you can preview this. if you want. Sort your data. I like to do that. Description amount. Preview. Okay, and there's the. Ex this is, I guess, what the raw data will look like after it is. Right. Ex well, right. this is what you're going to be pulling. Right. So now uh, let's do that one and export. Make sure I have, um, okay, it's on the USB. Okay, I'm going to have a name for this. So expenses for youth program 2019. Save. I'm a learn by doing person, so I like to show all the details on how it works. <laughs> I a think second. a lot of us are in that same boat, Brittany, so good deal. <laughs> okay, there's our data. Here we go. Here's our data. Maximize this. Excellent, excellent. Um, one of the other questions, and you've already gone through this, but uh, was whether or not you could export the formatted report to PDF. So you might want to illustrate that quick. And then I do have one more question. So we're starting to get some more questions going. So if you okay. did the PDF format of any one of the ledger reports. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm let's just going to go to one of my favorites. There you go. Let's do run report. Also output as PDF. I would like to save this to a specific area. Let's just go ahead and do here. Expenses for program 2019. This is going to be PDF, so it doesn't matter if it's the same name. Okay. And we're going, I guess that's a preview. You just close it. Yeah, preview. you can just close it. Here we go. And bottom boom. There is your PDF. Very you good. Print it and email it, save it. Email it, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there was, and this is an interesting question that uh, Rachel was saying she hadn't done much with course development, but what is the general difference between the budgeting module and the pocket legit module. Do you use budgeting much, uh, uh, um, Brittany? I actually don't use budgeting. Okay. Um, I mostly use pocket ledger, but they do pull up, pull up a tie course into and, each and if other. You if you don't um, mind, uh, pull up a course and, and let's just kind of take a look at that. Um, then, then let me take a shot at that. The budget builder, uh, folks, is really more of a forecasting uh, tool where, go ahead and hit that, where you can put in kind of a projected or estimated uh, expenses, um, what you believe you want to charge, what your per person expenses, and the bottom line is that it will give you a go, no, go, and break even number so that you would know if you've moved down to where the go, no, go number appears. We don't need to run through a full budget. Just, just scroll down, point your arrow at the bottom at the go, no, go. Yeah, to the right a little, to the right, to the right. There we go. One more to the right. Go, no, go, break even. Once you fill in the numbers here, um, it will give you a go, no, go. And again, the expense estimation, if you'd click on the middle tab on expenses, um, this is where you'd put in how much do I think I'm going to charge for the instructor? How much is my room rental? What kind of marketing budget do I have? And that's what the budget builder does, is really give you forecasting Whereas, as, as Brittany has clearly explained, Pocket Ledger is really live, real data. You want to try to capture as accurately a, 
uh, rec record of what you're spending on the classes. And so after the fact, it will give you your precise, here's the facts, nothing but the facts, profit or loss on that class. So, um, all right, I think, um, oh shoot. Okay, um, we good. Is audio good? I heard somebody say it, that we've got audio problems, but. Uh oh. Sharon, were you, are you hearing okay? I'm hearing okay. fine. I, okay, very good. Fine. Well, Brittany, that's all the expenses. Sharon, I'll let you and Brittany wrap it up okay. for all the, all the expenses, all the questions. Okay. I do have you one should. more. I've got one more report I forgot oh. to show everyone. Okay, Brittany, I'm going to give it back awesome. to you, bringing it back oh. to you now. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry about that. There, there about you that. are. This, I have one last report I want to share with everybody that I love so much. It is enrollment and income report. And you can, I have it saved to my favorites, but you can also get to this. This is going to tie in your expenses, accounting, income and enrollment summary. And I have a specific one that I have created. Let's get uh, it real quick. Oh. Yes. Uh, go ahead. I was going to have cancel that and and flip modify. I want to show folks uh, something on that. Go ahead now. Go in, but do modify. modify. And your sure. your report. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Summer camps. And I think it was this one. Now go ahead and do There's preview. Go preview preview, and then I'll circle back. All right, I like to do control I. I'm a shortcut person. There you go. And this is a really great report that shows your fees, enrollment, maximum wait list, total due, total paid, instructor costs, supplies, and, it, and the other, and then total profit loss. The so profit loss subtracts the expenses from your income, and you have your net at the bottom. Um, this particular one, I, I love. It's really great. Um, what we have this, I have this set to is subtracting the total due instead of total paid, but you could go in here and modify that with the total amounts paid. But let's say I know I'm going to collect all the total amount paid. This is what would we would net. So just had that one report to show. It's one of my favorites. Very good. And that's a beautiful report. Uh, close the preview and let me uh, show you. Now, what, you're, what I wanted to emphasize is that you'll note that this is a report that's not under pocket ledger reporting. It's under general income and enrollment reporting. And the point is that if you double click on the show X column under instructor expenses, bring up one of those expressions uh, oh, that okay. right there. There is a function. There are several functions available within the student manager function tool that you can actually bring in expenses into any report that you can grab the course number for. And this is an example of the show expense function uh, where you're bringing in expenses to any one of the reports. So kind of back to uh, the question that uh, Sarah was asking, you could actually add expenses if you've got a favorite report in one of the other reporting areas and you want to show the expenses for that class, you can actually use show expense and add an expense column to basically any report in the system that has course numbers. So, and, and that's what Brittany has done here and again makes it for a beautiful report. So. I actually imported this report from my student manager into this demo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it, 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 that'll work. That'll work. So, uh, Sharon, I, that's all my questions. Uh, how are you doing? You want to wrap up and, and, and preview the next webinar? I will do that. I am going to bring up – boy, there was a lot of information in that. We went from um, – pocket ledger to reports to favorite reports to all kinds of things and I did if you should be seeing my screen with the webinar archives right now you got yep. into a little yep. bit of querying and I want to recommend to everyone if you can get in here in the reporting tools Lindsay did a magnificent two series on re on crafting quality queries those are good sessions if you're wanting to get into some of that querying but 
Um, Brittany, I want to say thank you again. We have another guest presenter that will be with us in just 30 minutes. And so we encourage you to join us to hear about how they use course packaging at the University of North Carolina in Wilmington. Join us again in 30 minutes. And a shout out to Sioux Falls School District. Kelly, you won today's prize from uh, Savannah Bee Company. You have an email in your inbox already to tell you about that so we can get your address. But for now, we will see you in 30 minutes, folks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks again, Brittany. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.